Good day everyone. I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Deep Learning Mathematics. In this course, we will learn about scalars and vectors. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the concepts of scalars and vectors. Show the relationship between scalars and vectors and appreciate the roles of scalars and vectors in deep learning. So in our last lesson, we talked about historical trends in focus. We learned that deep learning is not new, only that it has undergone a lot of rebranding until it is called the deep learning that we know it is today. We learned that it was first known as cybernetics from 1940s to 1960s. Then, it was known as connectionism in 1980s until 1990s because of the way it was mostly based on the natural brain, that of human brain and animal brains. Then, it was only in 2000, 2006 when breakthroughs revolutionized and paved way to its modern term and practice called deep learning. In this lesson, we will learn about scalars and vectors. I know for some of you, these two terms are not new, so it does not cause you some doubts whether or not to pursue th this kind of career. So all you have to do is dig deeper to widen your knowledge and deepen your understanding of the field. So if this is your first time to hear these two terms, or if you heard about them before, but do not really know what they really are, then this course is for you. I will walk you through step by step of the process. I know how it feels because I was there. That is how I started. So with this, I would like to say that we really have to start from the very beginning, from the very basic, to strengthen our foundation. So as we progress with our course, we, we will be able to see or make connections or significance and networks among different strata or levels of concepts. So when we say scalar, it is just a single number. Just like for example when you say one, two, or three. Okay? So the single number one, single number two, and single number three. So these are what we call scalars. So if you remember your, your, your physics lesson, you would know that a scalar has the magnitude, like weight, distance, temperature, speed, mass, and time. So these are examples of scalars that have magnitude. Okay, okay so maybe you would like to ask, what do you mean by magnitude? Because this is really my first time to hear about this word or I, I met this word before but I did not exactly know what this particular term is. So well, this is a good question. So magnitude means the size or the extent of something. Like for example, when you are asked, how long does it take to cook one kilo of rice? Then you would say, it is 45 minutes. 45 minutes is the extent, let me write this one here first, 45 minutes, okay, so 45 minutes is the extent of cooking one kilo of rice. So another example is that when you are asked, what is your weight? So in this case, you are asked about your size or the amount of weight your body has. This is also similar when you are asked, how heavy are you? Or how heavy you are? This calls for the extent of your body weight. So, we write scalars in lowercase and in italics. Let me write here. It must be in lowercase and it must be in italics. For example, we have the letter X. Uh, small or lowercase and then it must be in italics. 
So that is why when you say s, okay, or scalar s, okay, this is in italics, then do you still remember the symbol? It means element. And do you remember this symbol? This is this means R or the real number. So this particular statement means that scalar is an element of R. Okay, so for example, when we say scalar, an element of R, be the slope of the line, but at the same time, we define that it belongs to a real valued scalar. So in this case, it is R, which means a real number. So in other words, we say that S is an element of real numbers of a real number R. Okay, so it's like we have this big circle and then we have this small circle. S is here. Okay, and then all of this big circle is R. So to say S is an element of R or S is the subset of the main set R. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so there are actually a lot of sets of numbers of interest within deep learning. So we are not going to deal only with the real numbers, but there are so many sets of numbers of interest within deep learning that we're going to study as we uh, move along or we move on with our lessons. So N for example, like this, okay, okay, n represents the set of positive integers. Okay, again, n represents set of positive integers. Then we have z. Okay, z, z represents the integers which include positive negative, positive, negative, and zero values. And also we have Q. Okay, this is Q. Q represents a set of, or a set of rational numbers that can be expressed as a fraction of two integers. Let me repeat that. It represents a rational numbers or a set of rational numbers that can be expressed as a fraction of two integers. Okay, so that's it for our scalars. Now let's go to the vectors. So vectors is an array of numbers. Okay, vector is an array of number. This is actually a collection of all possible vectors of a particular length. Okay, just like for example when we, okay later we'll have that anyway. So just like scalar, it is written in lowercase, like this one, lowercase, but this time it is bold type face. So its elements are written in italic type face, this one, italic type face, big, with a subscript. So for example, we have this one x the vector x having the element x sub 1, x sub 2 to x sub n. So re remember an array? Then we said that a vector is also a collection, collection of different values. So it's a, co it's a collection, just like this one. x, which is a vector, is a collection of all x values, any values that x can collect. So x here is in bold type face and the elements have subscript which means the first value, the second value, and the xn here, if you could see here xn, maybe you're asking what xn means or the n means, it means all possible values that are included in the length x. So it could be x4, 5, 6, 7, a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. 
until eternity. So as you can see, we have here explicitly identified the element of a vector. So we write them as a column, a column, and enclosed in a square bracket. Sometimes not really a square like this one, this is not a square, but just like a, a rectangle. But for definition, we call it square bracket. Okay, so in some cases, we, we index a set of elements of a vector. So what we do here is that we define a set that contains indices and write the set as a subset. So for example, if we would like to access x1, x3, x5, we define the set of s, which is equal to 1, 3, and 5, and write xs. So let me write that for clarity. For example, we have our s, which this is a vector s, which have the following values 1, 3, and 5. Okay, of course, this can also be written as okay, so anyway, for example, this one has these values. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and so on and so forth. And then we would like to index a set. Or if we would like to access this one, so we write this. Because we would like to access only the values 1, 3, and 5 from this uh, vector. So remember that this kind of vector, or this vector, has the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. So, and sometimes we would like to index, and indexing could be, for example, uh, having the complement of a set. So, in indexing the complement of a set, we sometimes, or we actually use a negative sign. This, this is a negative sign. So, how to do that? It's just very simple. So when you say x negative 2 or x sub negative 2, it means that the vector containing all the elements except x minus 2 or uh, yep, x sub 2. Okay, so for example, this one is x sub 1 this is x sub 2, and this is x sub 3. So we have 1, 3, and 5. So these numbers represent the values of x1, x2, and x sub 3, respectively. So if we're going to index x sub negative 2, that means we're going to access or retrieve the values except this value, which is x sub 2. Okay, so before I forget, uh, because this is actually very, very important for us to have some kind of clarity as to the relationship between a vector and a scalar. So vector signifies magnitude and direction. So in the case of your scalar, it only has magnitude, but in the case of your vector, we have to think of magnitude and at the same time, this would be a direction. Okay. So for example, when you when you say your car is running sixty kilometers sixty kilometers per hour. So the magnitude is sixty uh, okay, let me rephrase that. For example, when you would like to say that your car is running sixty kilometer per hour to the east okay to the east now it has a magnitude which is 60 kilometer per hour and the direction it is going to is to the east so therefore this is a vector because it satisfies it satisfies both requirements which are magnitude and direction so this kind of understanding is basic but as we progress in our course we will discover and learn intricate details and twists. So, 
you should always follow through each lesson. So let's pause for a while and contemplate on this because I know something is going on in your mind. After we have processed what the vector is and what a scalar is, now we have this kind of question. Okay, so given the fact that scalars can represent values, why are vectors necessary? Make sense? So, because we said this a while ago that scalars represent a number, a single number, it's like 1, 2, 3. So, given the fact that scalars represent or represents numbers, why do we have to use vectors? Okay, to answer this question, we have to go back to our respective, to, to the respective natures of the vector and scalar. So, the main use cases for vectors is to represent the physical quantities that have magnitude and direction. Scalars cannot do this because it can only represent magnitudes. Like for example, if we're going to talk about velocity, um, for example of a car, then in describing velocity, we have to understand what the magnitude is and what the direction is. Okay, so scalar cannot do that. Okay, so we're going to learn more about that, especially if we're going to um, have uh, what do you call this one? It's uh, identifying the moving cars and how how fast the moving car is, and we're going to differentiate how slow a certain car is with respect to another car. So the vector is very important in doing that. How can this be applied to deep learning? Vectors often represent feature vectors. This bears individual components that specifies how important a certain feature is. They are also mainly relied upon as basis for some machine learning techniques. For example, a support vector machine analyzes vectors across an n-dimensional space to find the optimal hyperplane for a given data set. So after all being said and done, let's try this. What is a scalar? What is a vector? How is a scalar related to a vector? And three, give an instance that a scalar and a vector are applied in deep learning. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.